Hello guys, as a part of Boycott China movement, I want to show to you how dangerous the Chinese Communist Party is that rules China today. This has nothing to do with the people of China who have themselves protested against this very government of China. Today I bring to you the speech of Chi Hao Shan delivered to a select group of high level party members. Now Chi is no ordinary person. He was the defense minister of China from 1993 to 2003. He was also the vice chairman of the Chinese Communist Party's Central Military Commission. He was a person responsible for the killing of the people at the Tiananmen Square protest. Now understand that he is speaking the thoughts of the ruthless Chinese Communist Party that rules China. He talks about the intention of the CCP to defeat, occupy and colonize the United States. This plan was drawn up in 1992, soon after the fall of the Soviet Union. The speech was translated to English and first posted on the Epoch Times in 2005. The veracity of the plan and its timeline, the talk of demolishing US with its own open market model and the use of bioweapons is chilling indeed. Extracts from speech. Germany's dream to be the lord of the earth failed because ultimately History did not bestow this great mission upon them. But the three lessons Germany learned from the experience are what we ought to remember as we complete our historic mission and revitalize our race. The three lessons are firmly grasp the country's living space, firmly grasp the party's control over the nation and firmly grasp the general direction towards becoming the lord of the earth. Next, I would like to address these three issues. The first issue is living space. This is the biggest focus of the revitalization of the Chinese race. In my last speech, I said that the fight over the basic living resources, including land and ocean, is the source of the vast majority of wars in history. This may change in the information age, but not fundamentally. Our capital resources are much less than those that Germany back then had. In addition, economic development in the last 20 plus years had a negative impact and climate are rapidly changing for the worse. Our resources are in very short supply. The environment is severely polluted, especially that of soil, water and earth. Not only our ability to sustain and develop our race, but even its survival is greatly threatened to a degree much greater than faced by Germany back then. Anybody who has been to the western countries know that their living space is much better than ours. They have forests along the highways while we hardly have any trees by our streets. Their sky is often blue with white clouds while our sky is covered by a layer of dark haze. Their tap water is clean enough for drinking while our groundwater is so polluted that we cannot drink it without filtering. They have few people in the streets and two or three people can occupy a small residential building. In contrast, our streets are always crawling with people and several people have to share one room. Many years ago there was a book titled Yellow Catastrophes. It said that due to us following the American style of consumption, our limited resources would not long support the population and society would collapse once our population reaches 1.3 billion. Now our population has already exceeded this limit and we are now relying on imports to sustain our nation. It is not that we haven't paid attention to this issue. The Ministry of Land Resources is specialized in this issue. But the term living space Lebensraum is closely related to Nazi Germany. The reason we don't want to discuss this too openly is to avoid the West association of us with Nazi Germany, which could in turn reinforce the view that China is a threat. Therefore, in our emphasis on He Zing's new theory, human rights are just living rights. We only talk about living, but not space, so as to avoid using the term living space. From the perspective of history, the reason that China is faced with the issue of living space is because Western countries established colonies ahead of Eastern countries. Western countries established colonies all around the world, therefore giving themselves an advantage on the issue of living space. To solve this problem, we must leave the Chinese people outside of China so that they could develop outside of China. The second issue is our focus on the leadership capacity of the ruling party. We have done better on this than the Nazi party. Although the Nazis spread their powers to every aspect of the German national government, they did not stress their absolute leadership position like we have. They did not take the issue of managing the power of the party as first priority, which we have. When comrade Mao Zedong summarizes the three treasures of our party's victory in conquering the country, he considers the most important treasure to be developing the Chinese Communist Party and strengthening its leadership position. We have to focus on two points to fortify our leadership position 
and improve our leadership capacity. The first is to stress that our party is the pioneer of the Chinese race. Many of our citizens say in private, we never voted for you, the Communist Party, to represent us. How can you claim to be our representative? There is no need to worry about this issue. Comrade Mao Zedong said that if we could lead the Chinese people out of China, resolving the lack of living space in China, the Chinese people will support us. At that time, we don't have to worry about the label of dictatorship. Whether we can forever represent the Chinese people depends upon whether we can succeed in leading the Chinese people out of China. The second point, he says, whether we can lead the Chinese people out of China is the most important determinant of the CCP's leadership position. Why do I say this? Everyone knows that without the leadership of our party, China would not exist today. Therefore, our highest principle is to forever protect our party's leadership position. Before 4th June, 4th June is commonly known as the June 4th Tiananmen Square protest incident in mainland China. So when he refers to 4th June, he is referring to Tiananmen Square protest. This reference can also be used to verify that this speech was given after the 1989 incident of Tiananmen Square protest. So he says, before June 4, we realized vaguely that as long as China's economy is developed, people would support and love the Communist Party. Therefore, we had to use several decades of peace time to develop China's economy, no matter what isms, whether it is a white cat or a black cat. It is a good cat if it can develop China's economy. But at that time, we did not have the major ideas about how China would deal with international disputes after its economy becomes developed. Comrade Deng Xiaoping said that the main themes in the world were peace and development. But the June 4th riot gave our party a warning and gave us a lesson that is still fresh. The pressure of China's peaceful evolution make us reconsider that these two main themes of our time. We see that neither of these two issues, peace and development, have been resolved. The Western oppositional forces always change the world according to their own visions. They want to change China and use peaceful evolution to overturn the leadership of the Communist Party. Therefore, if we only develop the economy, we will still face the possibility of losing control. The June 4th riot almost succeeded in bringing a peaceful transition. If it were not for the fact that a large number of veteran commanders were still alive and a crucial moment they moved Zhao Ziyang and his followers, then we would all have been put in prison. After death, we would have been too ashamed to report to Karl Marx. Although we have passed the test of 4th June, after a group of senior comrades pass away without our control, peaceful evolution may still come to China like it did to the former Soviet Union. In 1956, they suppressed the Hungarian incident and defeated the attacks of Tito revolutionists of Yugoslavia. But they could not withstand Gorbachev 30-some years later. Once those pioneering senior comrades died, the power of the Communist Party was taken away by peaceful evolution. After the June 4th riot was suppressed, we have been thinking about how to prevent China from peaceful evolution and how to maintain the Communist Party leadership. We thought about it over and over but did not come up with any good ideas. If we do not have any good ideas, China will inevitably change peacefully and we will all become criminals in history. After some deep pondering, we finally came to this conclusion. Only by turning our developed national strength into the force first striking outward, only by leading people to go out can we win forever the Chinese people's support and love for the Communist Party. Our party will then stand on invincible ground and the Chinese people will have to depend on the Communist Party. They will forever follow the Communist Party with their hearts and mind, as was written in a couplet frequently seen in the countryside some years ago. Listen to Chairman Mao, follow the Communist Party. Therefore, the 4th June riot made us realize that we must combine economic development with preparation for war and leading people to go out. Therefore, since then, our national defense policy has taken a 180 degree turn and we have since emphasized more and more combining peace and war. Our economic development is all about preparing for the needs of war. Publicly, we still emphasize our economic development as our center, but in reality, economic development has war as its center. We have made tremendous effort to construct the Great Wall Project to build up along our coastal and land frontiers as well as around large and medium-sized cities a solid underground wall that can withstand a nuclear war. We are also storing all necessary war materials. Therefore, we will not hesitate to fight a third world war so as to lead the people to go out and to ensure the party leadership position. In any event, we the CCP will never step down from the stage of history. We will rather have the whole world or even the entire globe share life and death with us than step down from the stage of history. Isn't there a nuclear bondage theory 
it means that since nuclear weapons have bound the security of the entire world all will die together if death is inevitable in my view there is another kind of bondage and that is the fate of a party is tied up with that of the whole world if we the ccp are finished china will be finished and the world will be finished our party's historical mission is to lead the chinese people to go out if we take the long view we will see that history led us on this path first china's long history has resulted in the world's largest population including chinese in china as well as overseas second once we open our doors the profit seeking western capitalist will invest capital and technology in china to assist our development so that we can occupy the biggest market in the world third our numerous overseas chinese help us create the most favorable environment for the introduction of foreign capital foreign technology and advanced experience into china thus it is guaranteed that our reform and open door policy will achieve tremendous success for china's great economic expansion will inevitably lead to the shrinkage of per capita living space for the chinese people and this will encourage china to turn outward in search of new living space fifth china's great economic expansion will inevitably come with significant development in our military forces creating conditions for our expansion overseas ever since napoleon time the west has been alert for the possible awakening of sleeping lion that is china now the sleeping lion is standing up and advancing into the world and has become unstoppable what is the third issue we should clinch firmly in order to accomplish our historical mission of national renaissance it is to hold firmly on to the big issue of america this appears to be shocking but the logic is actually very simple comrade heising put forward a very fundamental judgment that is very reasonable he asserted in his report to the party central committee that the sons of china is in fundamental conflict with the western strategic interest and therefore will inevitably be obstructed by the western countries doing everything they can so only by breaking the blockade formed by the western countries headed by the united states can china grow and move towards the world would united states allow us to go out to gain new living space First, if the United States is firm in blocking us, it is hard for us to do anything significant to Taiwan, Vietnam, India, or even Japan. So, how much more living space can we get? Very tribal. Only countries like the United States, Canada, Australia have the vast land to serve our need for mass colonization. Therefore, solving the issue of America is key to solving all other issues. First, this makes it possible for us to have many people migrate there and even establish another China under the same leadership of the CCP. America was originally discovered by the ancestors of the Yellow Race, but Columbus gave credit to the White Race. We, the descendants of the Chinese nation, are entitled to the possession of the land. It is said that the residents of the Yellow Race have a very low social status in the United States. We will need to liberate them. Second, after solving the issue of America, the Western countries of Europe would bow to us, not to mention Taiwan, Japan, and other small countries. Therefore, solving the issue of America is a mission assigned to CCP members by history. I sometimes think how cruel it is for China and United States to be enemies that are bound to meet on a narrow road. Do you remember the movie about Liberation Army troops led by Liu Baocheng and Deng Xiaoping? The title is something like Decisive Battle on Central Plains. There is a famous remark in the movie that is full of power and grandeur: "The enemy is bound to meet on a narrow road; only the brave will win." It is this kind of fighting to win or die spirit that enabled us to seize power in mainland China. It is historical destiny that China and the United States will come to unavoidable confrontation on a narrow path and fight each other. The United States unlike Russia and Japan have never occupied and hurt China. The United States also assisted China in its battle against the Japanese. But United States will certainly be an obstruction and the biggest obstruction. In the long run the relationship of China and the United States is one of life and death. One time some Americans came to visit and tried to convince us that the relationship between China and the United States is one of interdependence. Comrade Xi Jinping replied in a polite manner. Go tell your government China and United States do not have such a relationship that it is interdependent and mutually reliant. Actually Comrade Xi Jinping was being too polite he could have been more frank the relationship between china and the united states is one of life and death of course right now it is not the time to openly break up with them yet our reform and opening to the outside world will still rely on their capital and technology we still need america therefore we must do everything we can to promote our relationship with america learn from america in all aspects and use america as an example to reconstruct our country how have we managed our foreign affairs in these years even if we had to put on a smiling face in order to please them even if we had to give them the right cheek after they had hit our left cheek we still must endure in order to further our relationship with united states the united states is the most successful country in the world today only after we have learned all of its useful experiences can we replace it in the future even though we are presently imitating the american tone china and the united states rely on each other and share honor and disgrace we must not forget that the history of civilization repeatedly has taught us that one mountain does not allow two tigers to live together we also must never forget that comrade jiaoping emphasized refrain from revealing ambitions and put others off track 
the hidden message is we must put up with america we must conceal our ultimate goals hide our capabilities and evade the opportunity in this way our mind is clear why have we not updated our national anthem with something peaceful why did we not change the anthem's theme of war instead when revising the constitution this time for the first time we clearly specified march of the volunteers is our national anthem thus we will understand why we constantly talk loudly about the taiwan issue but not the american issue we all know the principle of doing one thing under the cover of another if ordinary people can only see the small island of taiwan in their eyes then you as the light of the country should be able to see the whole picture of our cause over these years according to comrade jiaoping's arrangement a large piece of our territory in the north has been given up to russia do you really think our party committee is a fool to resolve the issue of america we must be able to transcend conventions and restriction in history when a country defeated another country or occupied another country it could not kill all the people in the conquered land because back then you could not kill people effectively with sabers or long spears or even with rifles or machine guns therefore it was impossible to gain a stretch of land without keeping the people on the land however if we conquered america in this fashion we would not be able to make many people migrate there only by using special means to clean up america will we be able to lead the chinese people there this is the only choice left for us this is not a matter of whether we are willing to do it or not what kind of special means is available for us to clean up america Conventional weapons such as fighters, cannons, missiles, and battleships won't do. Neither will highly destructive weapons such as nuclear weapons. We are not foolish as to want to perish together with Americans by using nuclear weapons, despite the fact that we have been exclaiming that we will have the Taiwan issue solved at whatever cost. Only by using non-destructive weapons that can kill many people will we be able to reserve America for ourselves. There have been rapid development in modern biological technology, and new bioweapons have been invented one after another. Of course we are not been idle in the past years we have seized the opportunity to master weapons of this kind we are capable of achieving our purpose of cleaning up america all of a sudden when comrade jaoping was still with us the party central committee had the insightfulness to make the right decisions not to develop aircraft carrier groups and focus instead of developing lethal weapons that can eliminate mass populations of the enemy country from a humanitarian perspective we should issue a warning to the american people and persuade them to leave america and leave the land that they lived in to the chinese people or at least they should leave half of the united states to be china's colony because america was first discovered by the chinese if this strategy does not work then there is only one choice left for us that is use decisive means to clean up america and reserve america for our use in a moment our historical experience has proven that as long as we make it happen nobody in the world can do anything about us furthermore if united states as the leader is gone then other enemies have to surrender to us biological weapons are unprecedented in their ruthlessness but if the americans do not die then the chinese have to die if the chinese people are strapped to the present land a total societal collapse is bound to take place according to the computation of the author of yellow peril more than half of the chinese will die and the figure would be more than 800 million people a land has reached limit of its capacity one day who knows how soon it will come the great collapse will occur any time and more than half the population will have to go we must prepare ourselves for two scenarios if our biological weapons succeed in a surprise attack the chinese people will be able to keep the losses to a minimum in the fight against the united states if however the attack fails and triggers a nuclear retaliation from the united states china would perhaps suffer a catastrophe in which more than half of its population would perish that is why we need to be ready with air defense systems for a big and medium sized cities whatever the case may be we can only move forward fearlessly for the sake of a party and state and a nation's future regardless of the hardships we have to face and sacrifices we have to make the population if more than half dies can be reproduced but if the party fails everything is gone and forever gone in the chinese history in the replacement of dynasties the ruthless have always won and the benevolent have always failed the most typical example involved is yang yu the king of chu who after defeating liu bang failed to continue to chase after him and eliminate his forces and its leniency resulted in yang yu's death and liu's victory therefore we must emphasize the importance of adopting resolute measures in the future the two rivals china and united states will eventually meet each other in a narrow road and our leniencies to the americans will mean cruelty to the chinese people here some people may want to ask me what about the several millions of our compatriots in the united states they may ask aren't we against chinese killing other chinese these comrades are too pedantic they are not pragmatic enough if we had insisted on the principle that the chinese should not kill other chinese would we have liberated china as for the several million chinese living in the united states this of course is a big issue therefore in recent years we have been conducting research on genetic weapons that is those weapons that do not kill yellow people but producing a result with this kind of research is extremely difficult of the research done on genetic weapons throughout the world israel is most advanced we have cooperated with israel on some research perhaps we can introduce some of the technologies used to protect israelis and remove these technologies to protect the yellow people 
but their technologies are not mature yet and it is difficult for us to surpass them in a few years but if it has to be five or ten years before some breakthrough can be achieved in genetic weapons we cannot afford to wait any longer old comrades like us cannot afford to wait that long but we don't have that much time to live old soldiers of my age may be able to wait for five or ten more years but those from the period of anti-japanese war or the few old red army soldiers cannot wait any longer Therefore, we have to give up our expectations about genetic weapons. Of course, from another perspective, the majority of those Chinese living in the United States have become a burden because they have been corrupted by the bourgeois liberal values for a long time and it would be difficult for them to accept a party's leadership. If they survived a war, we would have to launch campaigns in future to deal with them, to reform them. Do you still remember that when we had just defeated the Kuomintang, KMT and liberated mainland China? So how many people from the bourgeois class intellectuals welcomed us so warmly? But later we had to launch campaigns such as the suppressions of the reactionaries and the anti-rightist movement to clean them up and reform them. Some of them were in hiding for a long time and were not exposed until the Cultural Revolution. History has proved that any social turmoil is likely to involve many deaths. Maybe we can put it this way, death is the engine that moves history forward. During the period of the Three Kingdoms, how many people died? When Genghis Khan conquered Indonesia, how many people died? When Manchu invaded the interior of China, how many people died? Not many people died during the 1911 revolution. But when we overthrew the three great mountains and during the political campaigns, such as suppressions of the reactionaries, three anti-campaign and five anti-campaign, at least 20 million people died. We are apprehensive that some young people to Day would be trembling with fear when they hear about wars and people dying. During wartime, we were used to seeing dead people. Blood and flesh were flying everywhere. Corpuses were lying in heaps in the fields and blood ran like river. We saw it all. On the battlefields, everybody's eyes turned red with killing because it was life and death struggle and only the brave would survive. It is indeed brutal to kill one or two hundred million Americans, but that is the only path that will secure a Chinese century in which CCP leads the world. We as revolutionary humanitarians do not want death, but if history confronts us which are a choice between death of Chinese and those of Americans, we would have to pick the later. As far as it is more important to safeguard the lives of the Chinese people and the life of our party, that is because after all, we are Chinese and members of the CCP. Since the day we joined the CCP, the party. Life has always been about all else. History will prove that we made the right choice. Now when I am about to finish my speech, you will understand why we need to know whether the people would rise against us if one day we secretly adopted resolute means to clean up America. For over 20 years, China has been enjoying peace and the whole generation has not been tested by war. In particular, since the end of World War II, there have been many changes in the formats of war. The concept of war and the ethics of war. Especially since the collapse of the Soviet Union and the Eastern European communist states, the ideology of the West has come to dominate the world as a whole. The Western theory of human nature and the Western view of human rights have increasingly been disseminated among the young people in China. Therefore, we are not very sure about the people's attitude. If our people are fundamentally opposed to cleaning up America, we will of course have to adopt corresponding measures. Why didn't we conduct the survey through administrative means instead of through the web? We did what we did for good reason. First of all, we did it to reduce artificial interference and to make sure that we got the true thoughts of the people. In addition, it is more confidential and won't reveal the true purpose for our survey. But what is more important is the fact most of the people who are able to respond to the questions online are from social groups that are relatively well-educated and intelligent. They are the hardcore and leading group that play a decisive role among our people. If they support us, then the people as a whole will follow us. If they oppose us, they will play the dangerous role of inciting people and creating social disturbance. What turned out to be very comforting is that they did not turn in a blank paper. In fact, they turned in a test paper with a score of over 18. This is the excellent fruition of a party's work in propaganda and education over the past few decades. Of course, the few people under Western influence have objected to shooting at prisoners of war and women and children. Some people said, is everybody crazy? Some others said, the Chinese love to label themselves as peace-loving people, but actually they are the most ruthless people. The comments are resonant of killing and murder, sending chills to my heart. Although there are not too many people holding this kind of viewpoint and they will not affect the overall situation in any significant way. But we still need to strengthen the propaganda to respond to this kind of argument. That is to vigorously propagate Comrade He Zing's latest article which has already been reported to the central government. You may look it up on the website. If you get on the website using keywords to search, you will find out what Comrade He Zing pointed out to the Hong Kong Business News during an interview that the US has a shocking conspiracy. According to what he hand in hand from September 27 to October 1995, the Mikhail Gorbachev Foundation, funded by the United States, gathered 500 of the world's most important statesmen, economic leaders and scientists, including George W. Bush. He was not the U.S. President at that time. The Baroness Thatcher, Tony Blair, Begin New Brzezinski, as well as George Soros, Bill Gates, futurist John Nisbet, etc., all of the world's most popular characters, the San Francisco Fairmont Hotel, 
for a high level round table conference discussing the problems about globalization and how to guide humanity to move forward to the 21st century according to what he is in hand in hand the outstanding people of the world in attendance thought that the 21st century a mere 20% of the world's population will be sufficient to maintain the world's economy and prosperity the other 80% of the world's population will be human garbage unable to produce new values the people in attendance thought that this excess 80% population would be a trash population and high tech means should be used to eliminate them gradually since the enemies are secretly planning to eliminate our population we certainly cannot be indefinitely merciful and compassionate to them comrade hitzing's article came out at the right time it has proven the correctness of a tit for tat battle approach and comrade deng xiaoping's great foresight to deploy against the united states military strategy certainly in spreading comrade hitzing's view we cannot publish the article in the party newspapers in order to avoid raising the enemy's vigilance hitzing's conversation may remind the enemy that we have grasped the modern science and technology including the clean nuclear technology as well as biological weapons technology and we can use powerful measures to eliminate their population on a large scale the last problem i want to talk about is of firmly seizing the preparation for a military battle currently we are at the crossroads of moving forward or backward some comrades saw problems flooding everywhere in our country the corruption problem the state owned enterprise problem the banks bad accounts problem the environmental problem society security problems education problems the age problems various appeals problem even the rights problem these comrades vacillated in the determination to prepare for military battles they thought they should first grab the political reform problem that is our own political reform comes first after resolving the domestic problems we can then deal with the foreign military battle problem this reminds me of the crucial period in 1948 in the chinese revolution at that time the people's liberation army's horses were drinking water at the yang zi river but they faced extremely complex situations and difficult problems everywhere in the liberated areas and the central authority received emergency reports daily what to do should we stop to manage rare areas and internal matters first before moving forward or press to pass the yang zi river with one vigorous effort chairman mao with his extraordinary wisdom and mental gave the marching orders carry on the revolution to the end and liberated all of china the previously thought serious conflicting problems were all resolved in this great forward moving revolutionary wave now it seems like we are in the same critical period as the horses were drinking water in the yangtze river days in the revolutionary era as long as we resolve the united states problem at one blow our domestic problems will all be readily solved therefore our military battle preparation appears to aim at taiwan but in fact is aimed at united states and the preparation is far beyond the scope of attacking aircraft carriers or satellites marxism pointed out that the violence is the midwife for the birth of china's century as war approaches i am full of hope for our next generation